Hello, citizens of the kingdom, and welcome to Mount Calvary International Worship Center's live stream. We're so excited to spend this time with you, and we anticipate an encounter with God like never before, right where you're viewing us from. Get the family together, and let's get ready to hear and receive a word from God as a family. Because we are a fellowship of believers, why don't you take this time to share and invite others to join in with us. Now, let's go into today's service. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. This Sunday morning, it is a great and wonderful day because this is the day that the Lord has made and we have the privilege of rejoicing and being glad in it. Welcome to the Sunday morning worship experience with the Mount Calvary International Worship Center. We're so excited about this time on this morning and how it is that the Lord will minister to each and every one of our hearts. I know we have become familiar with the um, message as well as worship from the sanctuary on Sunday mornings, and we will be returning there. Uh, but on this morning, I was led to, of course, share such a message that I believe that this message is a kingdom message for kingdom citizens and for every person that would give their ears to hear what the Spirit will say in the earth. I believe it will help us in this day and time. So I pray that you are ready for the word on this Sunday morning as the word is a difference maker. It is a lamp unto our feet. The word of God is a light unto our path. And we're grateful for the word. Go ahead right now and let everybody know. Uh, invite your friends and your followers to tune into our worship time and our time in the word on today. I want you, of course, uh, I hope that you are ready for the word, whatever you're doing right now. Remember, during our time of worship, we're not multitasking. We're not trying to do other things while we just glance at worship. No, whatever it is that you're doing, I want you, I want to encourage you to stop and give God this undivided time and attention because whenever we do so, we receive the great benefit of having this relationship, this active relationship with the Lord. Well, as we get ready for this word on today, join me in prayer with your Bibles in your hand. Let's pray as we get ready for this powerful word that the Lord has given us. Let us pray. Eternal Father in heaven, we give you praise, honor, and glory for this wonderful day. We are grateful, Father, for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth and to hear from you on today. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. Lord, if we can hear from you, we'll know what to do. So, Father, speak to us as only you can. Allow your word, dear God, as it comes into our, uh, dear God, hearts and we receive the revelation of your word. Father, we make a commitment to mix it with faith, apply it in our lives, that we may grow and develop, and your word will be a benefit to each and every one of us. Thank you again, Father, right now for keeping us another week's journey. Here we are on Sunday morning. Thank you for blessing our homes, for blessing our families, for blessing, dear God, our health. Father, for blessing us with our uh, resources and the necessary needs are being supplied. God, we just give you praise for every good and perfect gift comes from you. So, Father, we love you. Now speak to us as only you can. We have ears to hear what your spirit will say to us. We love you, we honor you, and we adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and thank God. Well, on this morning, as we prepare our hearts to receive the word of God on today, I want to share with you, of course, a very powerful word. And this is the word that the Lord has summoned me and directed me to share. Uh, I'll begin sharing it and I'll share uh, the word in its entirety today. And then, of course, we're going to build on that this coming Wednesday because I believe that we have to get this right now in order to be able to face everything uh, in the coming days and everything that we must endure in this season. With that being said, go with me, of course, to a passage that I've ministered to, uh, ministered from before, to you from before. But on this morning, I want you to tune in afresh to what the Lord will say to us 
concerning this day, this time, and this season. So go with me to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. As we look here in Jeremiah 29, I want you to uh, know without a doubt that the Lord, he sends uh, whatever we need when we need it, and he sends his word, and it is always right on time. But I want to begin reading at verse number four. We'll read verses four through 11 from Jeremiah 29. Here's what it says. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. He says this, build houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters that you may be increased there and not diminished goes on in verse 7, he says this, and seek the, the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and, I, and pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. For thus says the Lord, of God, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you, nor listen to the dreams which you cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. Verse number 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. And such is the word of the Lord and the word of the Lord uh, is blessed and the word of the Lord can be trusted. With this passage on this morning, I want to share in this teaching moment because we are facing even right now, uh, some very trying times. And in the midst of these extremely trying times, everywhere we turn, it seems to be confusion. Uh, uh, no, you know, everything is uncertain. We, you know, everything is that's before us. And I know we've been already, we've been here some months now, some months now, and, and, and the Spirit of the Lord arrested me this week and allowed me to see in the spirit realm so many people who are struggling, are struggling uh, even in this moment. And that's why you're tuned in today, because I believe that the Lord wants you to know right now what it is that we must do and how we must uh, conduct ourselves uh, in the midst of all of this uncertainty and all of this, you know, doom and gloom to some degree. And so I want to talk from this subject. I want to teach, if you will, from this thought If on um, this morning. Uh, I want to talk about facing indefinite delays. Facing indefinite delays. We must know, beloved, like never before, as we journey through life, there are many times where we are expecting to see God's hand moving uh, mightily on our behalf. We all have done what we've been instructed to do, what we've been taught to do. We prayed about it. We've you know been patient, but yet we see no results, ultimately causing us to wonder, you know, will our situation ever change? Will things ever get better? Will we ever see? Uh, you know, what we've been expecting or hoping to see. I want you to know without a doubt, listen, that, uh, you know, that in the midst of these challenging times, that uh, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. But whatever he has said, whatever he's spoken, he will do it and he will bring it to pass. And we must learn how to deal with life, and especially when we are facing indefinite delays, indefinite delays. This text on this morning 
will help us to learn how it is that God, listen, he does not shows, show up based on our emergencies. He does not show up based upon how difficult things are, but our God, he shows up, okay, based upon uh, unexpected end that he already uh, you know, have prepared. He's already prepared uh, the expected end. And please know, uh, beloved, that you and I must face these uh, unexpected and these indefinite, indefinite delays with a certain mind, a certain spirit, a certain character, and a certain behavior. And I believe that in the kingdom of God, uh, uh, abroad, everybody, every believer must shift right now and begin to uh, move in line with the character and the confidence that we have in God while we give uh, our respect and we will follow, uh, you know, whatever the laws of the land and, 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 and the recommendations of health and the wellness as they relate to what, how we must take care of ourselves. But in the midst of all of that, you and I, as kingdom citizens, have the responsibility, and we must, in this day and time, make certain that we are at this place in our lives where we are conducting ourselves in line with our faith and in line with the word of God concerning these indefinite delays. Yes, we are experiencing some, listen, some, 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 a real uh, uh, difficult times and everything looks like it's on hold. We are experiencing indefinite delay. And it's one thing to be on hold, but, but when you are on hold and all of the information that you receive does not give you, there's no, there's no, there's no end in sight. There's no resolve. There's no, you know, you know, it's like day by day, day by day, day by day. And every day, it looks like you're in the same holding pattern. You know, uh, we must know how, as believers, as kingdom citizens, what, what do we do with this? How, how do we handle it? How do we handle it? And this passage, listen, is so key to helping us handle this moment because this passage, listen, is a letter of direction to uh, the remnant of Israel who had been carried away captive from Jerusalem into Babylon. And these are God's people who've been carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. And they are in a place where they are in like a holding pattern. Like everything is standing still. Nothing is moving. All of the reports, uh, you know, they are the same. That something's going to happen one day. But at the same time, they are in the place that they'll find that they understand that something's going to happen one day. But, you know, the uncertainty or the indefinite picture is complicated because while we, we, we wait on and we'll trust that something is going to happen, at least give me a glimmer of hope. Tell me something. And because of that, they've been waiting, okay? And they are now tired. They have been seeking change for their situation until now, you know, they start seeking out, uh, you know, a word and seeking out answers within themselves. And ultimately, they wind up getting information that was there to entertain their emotions, if you will, to help them in their struggle and was giving them what they wanted to hear, what they wanted to hear. They wanted to hear that this was, uh, you know, the end and, and, and that things were shifting right now. And, and, and they wanted to, to receive all of that. And ultimately, you know, they were desperate. And in their desperation, they became vulnerable and they were vulnerable to First of all, um, information that was not accurate from the Lord. And at the same time, they were also vulnerable about giving up. And so in being in that place, God now sends 
you know, the prophet Jeremiah to help them understand how they must conduct themselves while they are facing, you know, uh, this delay, the, the, while they are facing this indefinite delay. And I believe the same place, just like we see in the scripture, is where we are today. Uh, and, and, and listen, in this, in, this, in this world, in the United States and across this globe and other countries, there are believers that believe in the true and living God and there are non-believers. And we're all in the same place of dealing with uh, these delays. And these delays, they seem indefinite. Uh, you know, they seem indefinite and all the information that we have, uh, you know, it leads us to the place that, you know, that uh, something's going to happen and something may happen around, you know, uh, the fall and then something may happen at the end of the year. And then some says, you know, it's going to be a year or two. It's indefinite. And they are dealing and we are as believers in this world, you know, and um, and that we're dealing with the same thing that others are dealing with. And that's where the kingdom is the difference because we are kingdom citizens and we don't just have to settle for what this world has to offer but we have the uh, we have an option we have an alternative and that is the kingdom of God and his all encompassing agenda and so God's all encompassing agenda within the kingdom gives us uh you know information of how to handle uh, you know, indefinite delays and how to handle moments like we are facing right now. So what God does, he sends, you know, a word through his ordained prophet, his ordained prophet to his children who are facing this indefinite delay. And that's something key right there, because like never before, you have to identify with who God has placed in your life to speak to you. Because in this day and time, uh, you must know that there are moments when uh, we will have, uh, you know, the word of God and, and a message that will come from others who have not necessarily been ordained to speak into our lives. And it is vitally important right now that we grab a hold of this and uh, hold on to God's word. So let's look with me right here. Let's look. God spoke to them and he speaks to us afresh today. Look with me again at verse number four right here uh, in, in, in uh, Jeremiah 29. Look what it says right here in verse number four. He says, thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Now, God uses this word that, you know, this, this phrase or this word of causing. And this causing here, God says, listen, that this, this word cause that we use in the English, it is actually permit. Uh, you know, he got permitted them. Okay. God can stop whatever he wants to stop. And uh, there are certain things that God does not stop, but he allows. And when he allows it, there are so many different reasons why he allow it. And so don't even be confused right here that, you know, that uh, everything that God allows is for punishment or correction. There's something that God allow that God allows for his glory that, you know, there's something that God allows to happen that all will know that he's still God, even though disappointment comes. Do you remember, um, you know, in John chapter nine, when the disciples asked about a child that was born blind who sinned? that this child was born blind. And ultimately, Jesus had to allow the disciples to know that it was not because of the sin of this child or the sin of its parents, but that in the midst of a very difficult time that God will still receive the glory that he desires and he deserves. And so there are so many different reasons why God permits things. And those reasons are not always unfolded to us. We are not always afforded the privilege of knowing why God will permit some things, but we will know one thing about God, that uh, he never changes. And because he's committed to you and I, he's committed uh, to loving us and caring for us, we must know that this passage can help us because in this passage, we will be able to see four things that we must do when we are facing indefinite delays. There are four things that we must do. And these four things, you know, is what was instructed to, uh, you know, God's people while they were in 
uh, Babylonian captivity. God caused, he allowed them to go into Babylonian captivity. And now we know through reading and we know how it is that God was, you know, uh, dealing with Israel on so many accounts where they would literally get off course and they would start to flirt with outer worship. And whenever they got out of line, God will allow some things to happen. We know their case. Then there are other cases that we don't really understand, as I just referred to, uh, you know, from John 9. But God says, listen, you may not understand the whole picture, but please just trust who I am. So as believers, as kingdom citizens, okay, how should we conduct ourselves in this hour? What must we do right now? And I'm glad you asked because we can learn through this passage four things that we must do while facing Listen, indefinite delays. The first thing we, that we must do is we must envision our success. Yes, when facing an indefinite delay and in facing indefinite delays, we must envision our success. Read verses five and six with me again. Look what it says here. He sends the prophet and the prophet looks at the people and tell them this. Build houses, verse number five, build houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that you may bear sons and daughters that you may be increased there and not diminish. Please know without a doubt, beloved, that here it is, <laughs> when we are facing indefinite delays like we're facing right now, we must envision our success. Don't see yourself as not making it. Stop looking at how hard it is. Stop looking at how difficult it is and begin to see yourself being successful and moving forth in God regardless of this time. There are times of testing. There are times of trial. There are times that we have to persevere. And as believers, we must learn to look good in the midst of our testing. In other words, don't let the devil see you sweat. Because if we allow the devil to see us sweat, he will come and literally mess with our emotions while we are going through our moment of sweating or panic or challenge. Please know this, okay? When it comes down to it, there are certain plants. There are plants everywhere. There are certain plants. But there are, you know, certain plants that will grow in an unusual environment. That grow in an unusual environment. There's some plants that will not survive unless there's a constant watering, you know, from you know, from either the rain or from some type of irrigation system. But there are other plants that, uh, of course, that grows in unusual environments. There are plants that grow in dry places and go in grow in places where there is no, you know, there is no uh, no no type of irrigation. And those plants that grow in those areas have been known to have, listen, to have, uh, you know, a root system that is their source of strength because there are certain plants that grow deep before they grow tall. There are certain plants that grow and tap in to their source of continual strength before they even begin to bloom or bear fruit. This is why the Bible tells us in Psalm, you know, in, in Psalm 1, that, you know, those that, 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 that walk, you know, uh, you know, according to the word of God, that we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in the seasons, who leaves don't even wither. Because when we are, listen, when we are planted and we have a root system that is our strength, what's going on above, uh, on the outside, really does not matter. The elements around us does not matter because we, you know, we have a strength. And as kingdom citizens and as believers, y'all, we must envision our success. You know, uh, COVID-19 and all of this stuff and the pandemic, y'all, it has not changed God. 
He's still God. He's still in control. He's still good. And he still has a promise and upon you. And he's spoken something over your life and over my life. So while we're facing these indefinite delays, we must first of all envision our success. See yourself in your future. See yourself being prosperous. See yourself going with God and becoming stronger. See yourself, and when you see yourself, speak over yourself and declare God's power even in your life because it has not changed God. And in facing, you know, this, you know, these indefinite delays, I know, I know, just like me, I, you've been waiting for some things, you want some things to change, but guess what? Okay, get a vision of your future, envision yourself, see yourself on the other side of this, because as believers, he told those that were in Babylon, he says, don't sit here and cry about how bad it is. Don't sit here and allow anything to pull your strength away. But he says, right now, see yourself being successful regardless of the times. Okay? See yourself being successful regardless of the situation. Because when you're facing, listen, indefinite delays, but we must first of all envision our success. The next thing we can learn on this morning when we're facing indefinite delays, we must do, we must do this. We must increase our intercession. Increase our intercession, our prayer life. Look with me right here in verse number seven. He tells them to increase their intercession. In verse seven, he says, and seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. <laughs> Please know, y'all, when we consider the word of God and know how it is that the word of God, listen, is here to help you and I, okay, to know, listen, that God can give us peace in the midst of the storm. And he literally tells these who are carried away captive in Babylon to increase their intercession. He says, pray for the peace of that city. They're in Babylon. They must pray for Babylon. Okay. And he says, pray for its peace because Babylon, you know, was a place of great confusion. It was a place for, of great challenge, just like we're facing today. You know, we're in a nation, we're in a world of great confusion, of great challenge. And God says, increase our intercession and pray for the city. Pray for its peace. And he says, and in it, you will experience peace. God says that he has a peace for us as believers, but it's connected to our intercession. Are we complaining about where things are instead of praying and believing God for the peace of it? See, because God can come in any storm and speak to it and command every wind and every wave, okay, to calm, to, to enter into a state of calm and declare peace be still. And so when we pray for the peace of our country, we pray for the peace of this situation. We've got all this confusion going on concerning right now, educating our children and getting ready to go back to school and everything else and educating even in higher education, not just the children, but our adults. And there's so much uncertainty but God is still the God of peace and we must be intercessors of peace and we pray for the peace. Please know where we are and what we are experiencing. Okay. Remember God allowed it. Therefore do not allow the challenge to regulate your spirit. My spirit, we cannot be regulated by the challenge. Instead, we must allow our spirit to regulate the challenge. In other words, when we are intercessors and when we are praying for the peace of this time and for the peace of this day, what we are doing, we are positioning ourselves, listen, to enter into a place wherein we're not moved by, by, by everything that's going on. We're not moved by the uncertainty. We're not moved by all of the challenges and everything that exists. We're only moved by the fact that we know 
Okay, God is still in control. So watch this. Find a way to rejoice in this trying time. That's the character. That's the mindset. We've got to rejoice. Okay, rejoice in the midst of it. Okay, rejoice. Listen, I don't care. No, you know, hey, I know we're, some of us we're, we're worn down by 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 all the things we must do, and then you know there seems to be no in game, there's no in plan, and we're like we're just just here and just just kind of just existing in the midst of all of this. But you've got to find a way to rejoice, and when you find a way to rejoice in the trial, you'll find out that we'll be just like the Hebrew boys when they were in you know. Uh, you know, in, in the midst of a fiery furnace, okay? When the thing is supposed to burn them up, they were walking around in it. And here it is, is because when we find a way to rejoice, God gets into the place where we are. And so even right now in this month of July and getting ready to go into August and, uh, you know, after four months of uh, being in delay and don't even see the end in sight, we still have a reason to rejoice. Oh, somebody on this Sunday morning, you ought to begin to rejoice right where you are right now. Because, listen, this is the character that we must have while we are dealing and we are facing indefinite delays. So, again, we must envision our success when facing indefinite delays. We must increase our intercession when we are facing indefinite delays. But then the third thing that we are learning from this particular passage today, when we are facing indefinite delays, we must ignore confusing influences. Ignore confusing influences. Read verses 8 and 9 with me. Here's what the prophet tells the people. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you, nor listen to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed, for they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. <laughs> listen, uh, listen, what was going on here? Okay, they were in the place wherein now they were so worn out by the delay until they were so easily influenced. They were influenced by the diviners and by the prophets and, uh, you know, that were in their midst telling them what they wanted to hear. No, listen, God says he did not send them. And that produced within them such an expectation till they began now <clears throat> to dream dreams about coming out in the next day or so. And they were, you know, at that place. Remember now, they, they, they were allowing all of these improper influences to come into their spirit man. And ultimately, they were in that place of, you know, embracing, you know, things that were helping them in their fears. They were in fear of the delay. They were in fear and they were tired. And ultimately, they began to fantasize, listen, outside of seeking God for discernment. This is not the day where believers and kingdom citizens that we must go forth and allow a fantasy of this time shifting to become, you know, our focus. No, we're not trying to fantasize our way out. We're going to discern our way out. And discerning comes by understanding what God says in the middle of it and then making the adjustments in our, in our uh, attitude and our mind so we can be prepared. Please know. Listen, they were told, <clears throat> they were told not to allow anything, listen, to deceive them because God already knew what he was going to do. And they had to learn to deal with the delay without giving themselves over to seducing spirits that were telling them that it was about to be over in the next day or so. I'm not here this morning to tell you when we're coming out of this. But I can tell you this, based on the character of God and the promise of his word, that we're going to come out of this. But in the middle of it right now, we are dealing with, okay, we are dealing with these delays. We're dealing with these indefinite delays. 
And that cannot regulate our spirit. We must be at the place where we will ignore confusion. Okay? Everywhere we turn, there's confusion. Especially when we tune into the news media today, it's confusion. Confusion between, you know, the leadership of this country and leadership of other countries. Confusion between the leadership of this country and his own staff and people that he's handpicked to make up you know, uh, task forces and, and all. And then confusion between, you know, the leader of this country and the governors and confusion between Democrats and Republicans and confusion between, you know, uh, you know, this one and that one and confusion between how, you know, a vaccine when it is, when it, when it comes, uh, becomes available, how, you know, Confusion uh, is even right now going before it to say who will get it and what they, they're going to get it. This is why we cannot rest in anybody else, but we've got to rest in the Lord. Somebody needs to know this morning that, listen, find your rest in the Lord and do not allow. Listen, you've got to ignore confusing uh, influences and don't allow the media and don't allow everything else. It's fine for you to watch the news. It's fine for you, but handle that stuff correctly and say, listen, while I'm listening at them, I'm tuned in to God. And whenever we are tuned in to God, God will give us what we need and he knows how to minister to us so we will not be in confusion or looking for somebody to say something. This is why it's so important. I'll be sharing something, you know, even later on this week, uh, Mount Calvary, because God wants us, even as the body, to understand how we need to move in this season, how we need to go forth in this season, how we need to, listen, uh, align ourselves in this season, because heaven <laughs> is not in panic about a pandemic. No. There's no panic in heavens. There's only plans. And so we are facing, yes, we are facing indefinite delays. But in the midst of, in face, in the midst of facing indefinite delays, we must envision our success. We must increase our intercession. We must ignore confusing influences. It's important today, beloved, that you and I Know without a doubt that in the midst of indefinite delays, please know this today. We must stand with, number four, we must stand with immovable confidence concerning God's promise. We've got to stand. The Bible says, after you've done all to stand, stand therefore. This is not the day for us to back away. This is not the day for us to doubt the promises of God. Read with me in verse 10 right here. So very powerful. God uses the prophet and the prophet begins to declare over the people of God and he declares over you today. Verse number 10. For thus said the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. Please know without a doubt, don't misunderstand me this morning. I'm not here saying that we're going to be in the midst of this pandemic or in the midst of facing this delay for 70 years. That is not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying to you today, that you don't have to worry about a clock because God has a set time. And when the set time of God comes, we all will be able to walk forth and see the full manifestation of the promise of God's word. Somebody today need to get excited about the fact that there is a set time and a set time for God to reveal himself in the midst of what we're dealing with. A set time. It is called, watch this, it is called a Kairos moment. Yes, a Kairos moment is God's set time. That God's kairos moment, his set time, overrides the chronos. The chronos says, by, you know, is looking at a clock. This needs to happen within a few months. 
This needs to happen in a few days. This needs to happen by tomorrow. But when it comes down to God, it matters not how long it's been. It matters not how long it may be. Because at the end of the day, at the set time of God, we will experience God's power like never before. Somebody ought to begin to rejoice right there where you are this morning because there is a set time. So we are in the midst of this time of indefinite delays. While we're facing indefinite delays, verse number 11, as we close, he says this to the people of God. God sends this word, and he says this word is afresh to every kingdom citizen, every believer right now. God says this, you got to know something. You've got to know that the thoughts that he think toward you, says the Lord, they are thoughts of peace and not of evil. Oh, God, oh, don't miss that. God says, listen, this thing that looks like is to take you down. He says, get a piece about it. It's going to lift you up. This thing that looks like is more than you can handle. He says, get a piece about it. He says, you are well able to handle it because I'm going to lift you up. He says, uh, listen, the thoughts I have towards you are thoughts of peace and not evil. He says, and I will give you, and I'm sending my word to you that you will have a future and you will have hope. So today, beloved, as we close, please know that mm -mm, we are facing, yes, some, mm -hmm, some delays, some delays that are so long until... It looks like this thing, you know, is not going to ever be over. It really doesn't matter because our hope and our trust and our confidence is in the Lord. And while we are facing indefinite delays, four things, envision your success, increase your intercession, ignore confusing influences and stand with Im immovable confidence concerning God's promise. Today, beloved, this is the word of God for every person that will hear what his spirit has to say on today. And I pray that you would grab this word and just don't take it as a Sunday morning sermon, but take it as a word that the way it is sent, a word from the Lord and a word for you in this time, let us pray. Eternal Father in heaven, we bless we you and we honor you, we adore you. We thank you for sending us your word on today. And God, we thank you that you are glorified even in this moment, that as we've ministered this word, dear God, that you are now causing every heart that's received this word on today to adjust, to make all the necessary adjustments. And as we make these adjustments, Father, we know without a doubt that we can, dear God, experience your power in our lives. Thank you, Father, right now, that every person that we are right now envisioning our success. And as we envision our success, Father, we thank you, Lord. We know it is key that we must increase our intercession, that we have to ignore confusing influences. And then after we've done all to stand, we make a commitment today to stand with immo immovable confidence concerning the promise of your word. So thank you for your word. We apply it to our lives to grow and develop. We thank you for all things now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And thank God. Well, on this morning today, we are praying and we are grateful for each and every one of you that's tuned in to this broadcast. But especially to you, my brother, my sister. You've never accepted Jesus. That means to accept him, you have to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart by faith that God sent him to die for your sins and raised him on the third day morning with all, on the third day morning with all power in his hand. I want you to know that today is the day of salvation for you. I want you to get ready. Or perhaps you're the one that had a working relationship with the Lord, but you strayed away from him. But today I want you to get ready. Today is your day. Listen, to return back to your place in him.
And then last but not least, you're that person. You don't have a spiritual family. Listen, I would love to be your pastor. I would love to cover you and pray with you and stand with you. Today, I want to encourage you to choose Mount Calvary International as your spiritual family. And listen, I want you to know that if, yes, you would do so, you will begin to hear God so clearly through his vessel, speak into your life, and your life will never, ever, ever be the same. So on today, I want you, all of you that needs to make that decision, I'm praying for you right now. Precious Father, for my brother, for my sister, for your son and your daughter, viewing this broadcast, the one that needs you, the one that wants you, and today that they're making a decision for you. That's to be saved, Father. We thank you for the one that's accepting your plan of salvation. Father, we thank you for the one that's recommitting his or her life to you. And we thank you that they will make Mount Calvary their family. Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory for all things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, you prayed that prayer. I want you, even on this morning, if you prayed that prayer and you accepted Jesus, I want you to dial in right now. I need you to dial this number. I need you to call 504 304-340-7777 because there's someone waiting to help you in your decision and it will help you to walk forth in the Lord. May God bless you. May God keep you. We're excited about your life and your decision. Well, on this morning, listen, I want us to prepare our hearts and our minds right now uh, to honor the Lord in giving. First of all, we bring the tithes because it is holy unto the Lord. Then we give a liberal offering because the liberal soul shall be made fat. Listen, when it comes down to our faith in God, okay, faith is an action word. Every time it comes down to faith, we must do something, give something, or say something. When it comes down to it, I want, first of all, I want to commend all of you, so many of you that's been so faithful to the Lord, even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of a challenging time. And it is without a doubt that your confidence in God and his word is at a high level. And please know, I know you see the manifestation of God's power in return to you because he promised that he gives seeds to sowers. And then he's going to multiply every seed that you sow. Okay? And then he's going to increase your fruits of righteousness so you stay faithful. But I want to pray today and I want to challenge uh, any of you that's viewing this broadcast and even, you know, on this morning that you've been looking at what you have and looks like you cannot afford to, to, to get involved in giving unto the Lord. And the Lord knows and uh, all of the things that we use to excuse ourselves. Listen, you cannot, you can't afford to not give unto God because when you take your little bit and you honor the Lord with it, God in return, listen, showers a blessing of increase on every seed sown. So I want all of us to get ready to give. There are several ways that you can give and I promise you, trust God and trust his word. Listen, first of all, you can text to give by texting MCI giving to 54244. You'll receive a link and you'll be able to give. Or you can go on the Givelify app and give. Find Mount Calvary International Worship Center on the Givelify app and you'll be able to give. And then also you can give by on it right here on our website. Those of you that's viewing my website or go to www.mciworshipcenter.org and you're able to click on the give now. You can always give at Mount Calvary International Worship Center. Either you can bring it, you can drop it off this morning. There are, of course, security and worshipers there and workers there, uh, you know, here at the worship center. Even on this morning, out in front waiting for you. Okay, so you can then uh, sow your seed in faith until 1130. Or you can mail in your seed uh, to 1600 Westwood Drive in Marrero. But however you're going to give, trust God in your giving and to know without a doubt, God will never ever allow us to outgive him. We're about to consecrate our giving together in just a moment. But while we're preparing to consecrate our giving, this coming Friday, this coming Friday, I want to make certain that all of you, please know, God has spoken something to me. That's why this past Friday, I did not have an update. I will be sharing a broad picture, 
a broad picture of the days to come concerning ministry and how it is that God wants us to establish establish ourselves uh, on the one focus of how we're going to be doing this uh, in the days to come. And so I need you to tune in this coming Friday, 7 o'clock p.m., this coming Friday for the update. If you don't have the Zoom information, call our office on Monday to make certain that they include you on the Zoom information. But every leader, every person that desires to serve, and every partner, I need you to be on this Friday, either by video conference or dial in, but you must. Contact the office if you have not been receiving the Zoom information, but put it in your alarm right now. I need to, listen, I need to know that there are hundreds of us that's tuned in this coming Friday for that special time. Listen, right before we uh, consecrate our gifts, there's a special treat I want to share with you on today. The Bible, listen, lets us know, uh, you know, how, it, how important it is that we spur one another on to good works. There are seven young men, seven young men, and, uh, and, and with that being said, I'm grateful for all of our young people. This coming Thursday, before I introduce these seven young men, uh, this coming Thursday at 8.30 p.m., 8.30 p.m. Somebody say 8.30. Yes, 8.30. Most of our young people are starting to settle down around 8.30. There'll be a special presentation on our YouTube channel, okay, as well as on our church website uh, for our um, middle school junior high and high schoolers, middle school, junior high and high schoolers, uh, teen ministry, the lit teen ministry, will be having a special ministry presentation this coming Thursday. I want you to set your clocks, get your teens together, uh, your children, your grandchildren, tell them it's a special time of ministry going forward. Thank God for all of our leaders and the hard work they're doing this coming Thursday, 8.30 p.m. on our Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, on our YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel, as well as on our church's Facebook Live, as well as our church's um, um, uh, website, okay? So now, these seven young men I'm about to uh, introduce, uh, they're, listen, they're such a blessing. They call themselves 7 a.m., 7 a.m. They released a very powerful video concerning this time of social injustice. And it was on my heart to feature them as a part of our Sunday morning experience. Thank God for Hezekiah Brinson, who is the maestro, who's done such an incredible job in both mentoring uh, these young men as well as teaching them how to minister, uh, uh, of course, unto the Lord in worship and then to minister unto people. And even in a time like this, and you'll be greatly encouraged. I want you to right now to tune in to this very special presentation from 7 a.m. We come today to recognize the world is in travail and full of misery. Men crying peace where there is no peace. People are chasing elusive heights and dying in the streets. The poor are still overrest. The rich are filled with greed. Oh my Lord, there is a need for your love. I must lend a helping hand and be a witness the best that I can. Spreading light across the land Like a city that's on a hill the truth may be revealed Oh Lord There is a need for your love Lord Jesus help me To help somebody else A soul is crying out today For those who do not know the way
announcing the truth They're even killing children in the classroom A world of unbelief Immigrants yearning to be free Lord, touch the hearts of men And bring them back again, my Lord There is a need for your love The world is changing right before our eyes This isn't the time to separate We need to realize that the time is That I met 
would lay down his life for his free. The world needs now. Cause all things work together for the good the of them. The world needs now. We ought to love one another, stop killing each the other. The world needs now. I believe, I believe, I believe that he's the love. The world didn't give it to the world, can't take the it world away. Needs now. Is the love, is the love of Jesus. Said the world needs a you, the world needs a you. The world needs now. Ooh, yeah. I need, I need, I need the love. Needs now. We declare that no administration. What the world no world needs now. No racist rhetoric. The world needs your love. No political yeah. party, whether it be Democrat, Republican, now. or Independent, will separate us yeah. from one another. Well, I know without a doubt you enjoyed that. It's so very powerful. We want to encourage those young men to keep uh, standing for the Lord and doing a great job in communicating peace and confidence. Uh, with that being said, I want many of you to make certain that you are registered to vote and that you are preparing for this November. We're going to the poll in record number, um, not because of a party, but more importantly, we know that change is necessary. It's even in social justice, it's hard to get uh, everything done on the ground when the highest office in our land is, uh, is, is taking denial concerning what needs to happen. And so we need change and we're preparing for that. All right, I pray that you are ready now to uh, honor the Lord in giving. So get your digital device whenever you're using the give. Let's lift our gift and let's make our confession of faith together. Come and repeat after me. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. So good seed into good soil. I know I will not suffer because of my obedience. For I am blessed according to your word. I set my affections on your house and your work. I am confident that you have made all grace abound towards me, and I have all sufficiency in all things that I abound to every good work. I believe your word is done in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give it a victory wave right now. Amen. So seed and the kingdom and be blessed. Well, listen. I want you to get ready. I want you to get ready. I want you to get ready. Um, putting this in place, putting this in motion, uh, because we're going to be preparing. We're going to be preparing um, uh, to share together. And the next time we will be sharing together in a pull-up worship experience will be on the second Sunday in August. We will have a pull up and praise worship drive in worship experience the second Sunday in August and because we're going to be pulling up together the second Sunday in August we're going to now have that day as the day of communion so we will have communion on the second Sunday in August we listen please know the Word of God says as often as we do it, we do it in remembrance of Him. So we will not be having communion on the first Sunday. We will have communion on the second Sunday in August because we want it to be a part of the pull-up worship experience on the second Sunday. And so until then, I want you to just kind of mark your calendars for that. We'll be getting that information out. Well, may God bless you. May God keep you. Hold on to this word. Hey, I want you to join me this Wednesday night for a powerful time of kingdom teaching. And then remember, Friday night, look forward to all of you meeting us 
on the Zoom call as we will unfold listening where we're going to be in the coming days and months as we obey the Spirit of God. Until then, stay focused, stay in faith, and stay connected. Kingdom blessings be upon you.